Hello everyone, I'm Balni Mohan, the product manager for Maple in BSE. In today's webinar, we will see how to import a master equipment list into SysML model using an Excel interface. In today's webinar, uh, initially I'll, I'll go over an overview of what Maple in BSE is, what are the advantage, and then I'll move on to explain what MEL is, what are the advantage of using MEL with Maple in BSE, and how easy it is to import this list into a SysML model. And then I'll go to different use cases of importing uh, equipment list and how this equipment list in the two use cases is being transformed as a SysML element. And then I'll go over the implementation or, or the first step that you can take in implementing Maple MBC in your organization. And I'll get to more details on it towards the end of the video. To give you an overview of what Maple MBC is, so in, in your organization, uh, in your MBC process, you have the system engineers or, or the system architects who maintain or who manage the whole MBC process. So they create the SysML model or, or models from different languages, and this is being stored in a centralized uh, server or, or a centralized repository. Now, uh, once the system engineer has the whole setup, now he wants interaction or, or he wants information and collaboration from other stakeholders. So th these project stakeholders, they are the subject matter experts in their own field. So they, they could be the safety engineers, mechanical or design engineers, etc. And it, it, these engineers, they are not familiar with SysML model. They are not familiar with the process, uh, the modeling tool, etc. And the interaction that these stakeholders have towards the SysML model or the system models with the system engineer is uh, they share, these information are being shared as reports or, or some spreadsheets which are detached from the model and through emails, etc. So this is where uh, we, we have the problem. So this is where the friction starts. Uh, the information now is detached from the model. You are, you are not working with the latest information. It, it's very hard to now collaborate and the people don't understand uh, the, the full or see the whole, whole, whole architecture here. Now, what Maple MBC offers is an uh, Excel interface. So, Maple MBC uses an Excel interface through which these stakeholders who are not familiar with the uh, modeling language and the modeling tool can easily interact with the SysML model now. And this interface or, or this Excel interface is managed or, or created by the system engineer and the, now. It can create, or now the system engineer has the capability to create task-specific views based on the workflow or, or the information that is needed from the different stakeholders. And what, what Maple MBC now facilitates is, it's easy to do design reviews, state studies, FMEA uh, easily, and also collaborating now with the stakeholders, and also managing the models in a centralized server. So what Maple MBC brings to the enterprises, it broadens the engagement now of the system engineering process. So the subject matter experts who are not familiar with the tool and on the language, now it's very easy for them to work with a very familiar interface, that's the Excel. And since it's Excel, it's very easy to start working. Uh, you can reduce error and reducing cost here is the cost of adding something wrong in the SysML model and then realizing it later. Now everything is, easy for the end user, uh, so the subject matter experts to interact. And the backend is completely customizable by the system engineers to fit it into the organization with different MBAC uh, processes or different projects that are being done. Now, what MEL is? So MEL is nothing but it's a master equipment list. So it's a list of parts in the system. So you have, it could, it's the list of parts, uh, the subsystems, which defines the hierarchy and it all has some common attributes. So in, in general, uh, what are the attributes that you will find with the master equipment list is you, you will have the mass, the quantity, uh, what are the different subsystems, uh, you can have the part number, uh, what are the uh, type of values that will change, uh, what is the total power consumption, etc. So th th these are kind of information that goes into the master equipment list. And this has to be managed in uh, your process when, when you are at the layer of defining the system, their hierarchy, etc. So, what is the advantage of uh, managing MEL with, with Excel or, or with 
Mapling BSC is it's very easy to create. Uh, you can edit the existing ML from uh, from a model that's saved in a server, and you can now import uh, existing equipment list. So you have an equipment list uh, which is from from your legacy uh, system. So you have, you have a very large list of uh, equipments. Now you can import it easily into Maple MBAC, edit it, and when you save it to the server, it's going to be uh, transformed as SML model elements. And the advantage or the main advantage why uh, using ML with Maple MBAC is very easy is you don't need any SysML knowledge. So you don't need to understand what SysML is, what are the different relation you have to create between these uh, system, subsystem, or other properties. You can do all this with just a very simple table interface, and MapleMBAC will do all the uh, hard work of transforming this information into a SysML model. Now, I, I, like, like I mentioned before, we are going to see two different workflows here. So one is, I'm going to import a flat list of equipments. I'm going to create a hierarchy for this list of equipments. And we are going to see how this is being saved in the model. And the second one is, I'm going to, again, import a different flat list. But in this case, I want to inherit properties from, from, a, com uh, from a very common component. So I have a component with which has certain value properties or certain values. And I want other components to inherit those values. And so each, each of these values that are being now changed will be added as a redefined value for the new components that I'm going to create. And then I, I also can create hierarchy now for uh, the components that I've imported. So now let, let's get to the model. So here, I, I just launched a Maple MBAC file. So this file is nothing but uh, it has information on how or what information from the model Maple MBAC should query and how it has to be displayed on the Excel printer. So now I'm going to launch the Maple MBAC file. So this file is a so now I'm, I'm, I just launched a Maple MBAC file. So this file contains information on what kind of model elements that I want uh, to get from the server, uh, what information has to be displayed, how this information has to be displayed. So that's what is within this file. So now I'm going to launch the the Maple MBAC file uh, using it. What this MSC file is, or what what this file that I just launched is, uh, this file has information on how and what information that I want from the model and how this information has to be displayed. So now, uh, when I launch Maple MBAC file, so now it's going to uh, connect to the server and it's going to bring in the login dialog box. So, so today, for uh, today in, in uh, so now when when I launch Maple MBAC, uh, you, you will get the login to Teamwork Cloud server. So for today's webinar, I'm going to show the sample uh, with connection to the server uh, and then how we could import new information and save it back. So I'm here based on your uh, login information so, and also based on the permission that has been provided by the server administrator, you will see the projects that you have access to. And for today's uh, webinar, I'll be selecting the MEL and we are going to 
work with this project. Now, uh, once my login is validated and I make a connection to the server, MapleMVC is going to query the whole uh, model and it's going to display the relevant information that I want from the model. So, in the meantime, I'll also show you the file that I'm going to import into MapleMVC. So here, um, as you can see, I have a flat list of equipments. So th these are the list of equipments that uh, that I got from Lunar LA satellite report. So this is a report that is publicly available um, from NASA. So we, these are the list of equipment from uh, communication systems of the satellite. So here, as you can see, I have quantity, uh, the unit mass, the CBE mass. So CBE mass is the current best estimate. What, what is the growth percentage? and the uh, growth percentage calculated from the uh, CBE mass, what is the total mass, the power, et cetera. So th this, this is the list of information that I want to import into MapleMVC and save this as decimal elements in the model. So now here, as you can see, I have, I have opened MapleMVC, I have made the connection to the server. Um, the tables are empty because I, I don't have any information in the model. So as a system engineer, so here, this, this is Cameo Systems Modeler, so this is the tool I'm going to be uh, using on, on the other part. So as you can see here, I have the communication system, and there are no information with the, within the uh, communication systems folder. Uh, so, as you can see, that uh, there are no information in the model. And here, I'm going to go to the Cameo Systems model. So this is a tool that I'm going to be using as a system engineer. And you can see that within the communication package, we do not have any model components. That the package is empty. So let me go back to MapleMVC. Now I want to import the list of equipment. So I go into add-ins, import the Excel file. Let me select the import. And now MapleMVC will import all, all the equipment list. It's going to create all those uh, properties with, with different values that you saw. And now once the import is done, I'm also going to get a message and the number of elements that has been updated or import. So here, uh, as you can see, that I, I can see a list of uh, the components or, or and their information being imported into MapleMVC. So here is the list of or the flat list of equipment that MapleMVC has imported. Now, uh, like like I mentioned for the first workflow, we are also going to see how to create hierarchies between these components. So I, I, as as an engineer, I would know what what are the uh, top level components what are the sub components that has to be uh, created so i have i have the other worksheet so in this worksheet so this is where i'm going to create the assembly of the components so here initially what i'm going to do is i, I want to create three layers of assembly so there will be my components then my sub components and another sub component but <clears throat> i'm going to start with the communication systems or let me start with the k value I'm just using Excel's copy paste. So for our uh, key down link, I want to create sub components or I want to assign the components up to the way of it. No, I'm just again copy pasting all these uh, component values and to add the information or to add that all these components that I added in, in the columnar for sub components of this one. So I just drag and drop the information. And you can see the other, other value properties uh, or the other values are automatically populated based on the uh, the subcomponents in, in column F. Now, let, let me complete the hierarchy list for the uh, K band 23, 26 billion. Again, I'm just copy pasting this value. And the way I want to create uh, components is I want to add subcomponents up to the K band 
a partir de aquí y decir structure I added two other uh, subcomponents now um, in addition to the K band 23 I want to add some more subcomponents to the K band 30 37 uh, 40 I want to assign only two subcomponents here, so this is the KWPA and the K band laser. Just adding and dropping. Now I want to create some uh, subcomponents for the S band relay link. So the list of again the list that or, or the list of subcomponents that I want to assign to the band link of the relay link is the band receiver and up to the band ports. Here, okay, I'm again dragging and dropping this information to say that uh, the SA band coax is part of the SA band relay link. And then I also have the data router. Data router is going to have only one part. Now, finally, I have the uh, the antennas and it has components up to the uh, SA band LG. So I have the antenna and I want to assign uh, this list or this component as subcomponents for my SA for my antenna. Okay, so again I can just drag and drop it. So here you can now see that. Uh, I have the list, I had the flat list. Now I have created a list of subcomponents, and these are the components that are going to own my subcomponents as a list. And in addition to this, I'm also interested in creating another layer of hierarchy, or I want to assign all the components that I created now with subcomponents to be subcomponents for my communication. So I want to add the communications and assign. Say the K band is a subcomponent, and then my K band 23, 26 is a subcomponent, and then my 3037 is a band relay link, with a router, and finally the antenna. I'm going to just drag and drop here. So now what I'm telling MapleMBAC is I'm, I'm having the communication and these are all the subcomponents for my communication. And I can use Excel formula. So in the template, I've already preloaded uh, or I've already included that my current best estimate is nothing but the product of quantity and unit. So what I can do here is just drag and drop. So any, any changes that I make between the sheets, so let, let me only do it up to the level of uh, the subcomponents initially. So in same way for growth, I've added a formula here and for my total mass. So now what I've done is I've just embedded the formula that, that was in the template to each of these uh, columns. And now I can easily change the quantity uh, if I want to say uh, the LNA splitter for the relay link. Instead of one, I want to say add two. So if I add two, you can automatically see the total mass is being calculated. And you can use now Excel formulas to calculate other values, etc. And it's very easy now to work with table within Excel. Uh, you can use Excel formulas now uh, to make connection between each of these columns. So uh, you can do kind of like a very small analysis here itself. And so now all, all my changes are again local to to Maple MBC here within your uh, within the client. I want to save all these inputs, the changes that I have made between the uh, between each of these value properties now into a system amount. So here I'll double click on the save button and I'm going to get a uh, commit to teamwork cloud dialog box. Going to add a message as importer communication system. And okay. 
to now all, all these changes that i have made uh, the list of equipment that i have imported is being saved also now I, to see these changes i will in in cameo system modeler i'm going to go to collaborate uh, update my project and now you can see in, inside the communication package all, all the list of components that we are we created using mapping bc will will be shown here so here so we have all the list of components now to say I, I want to now just visualize it and drag and drop the relations and all these relations will now be automatically created let me drag and drop all the components so here it's, it's loading fix the layout so here now you can see that i have i have imported all the components with with the value properties so i add the top level component which is the communication and then uh, i add some subsystems and each of those subsystems again has a certain list of components for it. Now, as you can see, uh, I, I made the choice as, as a system engineer, I made this choice that the kind of relation that has been, that has to be created between the system and the subsystem is a direct composition. So the user didn't need to worry about what kind of relation has to be created between the components, uh, what are the value properties, how it has to, uh, have units or other default value. So you here, as you can see, uh, with the K uh, TWTA component, uh, I have the quantities. It has the default value. I have the unit mass. Uh, we have the unit defined for that value, and then the default value also. And as you can see, we also have added two stereotypes. One is a block, and the other stereotype is a component. So uh, just by importing certain lists making changes, adding an, a hierarchy, which was very easy in Maplin BC. Now you can see how, how this has been transformed into a SysML model. So in, in this specific view, as you can see, we have the hierarchy defined, we have the stereotypes defined, we have the values with units, default values. Again, all this is done by an engineer or all this can be done by an engineer who is not familiar with SysML. So that, that's what Maplin BC is. And any changes the system engine now makes here, uh, he, he reviews it, he, he adds certain changes from his side to the model. Just by re, uh, reloading uh, in Maplin BC, you'll be able to get those latest changes. So here, uh, when you reload, in any changes that I've made from the server, the engineer who's working with Maplin BC will always have the updated list. Now, let me move on to the other, other workflow where I wanted to show you uh, a common component. So I have a component which has certain properties and I need to create another list of components that is going to generate all the properties the previous component has. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, so th this here shows the spacecraft component. So this is a component to which I'm, I I'm going to kind of generate all the values you see here. So I'm going to include a list of components so here you, uh, you can see that uh, in, in this table, this component list is specific to SNMS. Uh, so SNMS is the structures and the mechanical system. So I'm going to add some uh, list here. And what I'm going to tell is I want to inherit the properties from the spacecraft component in this table. And then we are going to, again, play with certain values now uh, based on, or, or this is going to be very similar to how we added the components. And the list I'm going to import here is the redefine. So in the redefine tool, I have just a list of only setting a flat list of components. And then the tables here, as you can see, I have certain value for, uh, values for each of the components that I'm going to import. Now, again, uh, in Maplin BC, I'm going to go into add-ins, import the Excel file and select the redefined file. So now my PMBAC is going to import, uh, create all the uh, components. So it, it's going, like, like I mentioned before, it's going to add all those stereotypes or add the value properties, et cetera.
And again, once the import is done, we are going to get a notification on the number of uh, information that has been updated, the number of records that are also created. So here, uh, my import is done. I'm also updated on the number of uh, new entries that have been created and the number of updates that have been done in the model. So as you can see, I, I have imported the flat list. So all the uh, component list that has to go into the uh, structures and the mechanical system. Now, like, like I mentioned, for all, all these are uh, the components that has to inherit or it has to share the same property of my spacecraft component. So what I can do is just copy paste in this uh, in this table. So here by super type of uh, what I'm saying is whatever is being added here for the spacecraft component on, on my column E, these ones are going to inherit the same properties uh, or, or the same kind of property from the spacecraft component, which can be now redefined. So let, okay, I'm going to just copy paste these information. Here I have the list of all the uh, components which are going to share the same list of values from the spacecraft. So that now in the redefinition table, as you can see, uh, I have the list of components, the quantities, uh, the unit mass. This, these are in sync with the same table that we saw for the uh, components. So now here, same way, let, let, let me create uh, the formula, an Excel formula here, uh, based on which I'll, I'll be calculating the CPE mass, growth, and the total mass. So I'm going to tell that my uh, current best estimate mass is nothing but product of the quantity and the unit mass. And also uh, the growth is the product of my Current best estimate the growth percentage by hundred. Now the total mass is the sum of my growth and the current best estimate. So here, let me drag and drop so the formula is applied to the whole table. And similarly for the growth, and finally for the total mass. So now I can easily change the list of components that I want to uh, add now into the model. So, and this is more useful when you're uh, working with the hierarchy, but here I, I just want to show you the workflow that how including uh, values in, inside the table and how you can use Excel formulas to easily update those values. Now that, so say I'm done with all my changes, I have imported it, now I want to save all, all the import and all the changes that I've made back to the server again. So again, I'm going to double click on the server. We imported the recent MS list. And I'm going to click OK. So now all, all my changes are going to be saved back to the server. So similar, similar to the previous uh, Workflow where we imported the components here. Uh, I'm going to see the list of components that we imported into the uh, S and MS package. Now, let me go update my model. So once update is done, I'm going to see the list of uh, components that has been added by the user from Maple BC. Here now we have the list. Let me uh, lock all these elements. So by by locking, what I mean here is, if a user has logged it in Cameo Systems model, you will not be able to edit those model or those model element in Maplin BC, and it works the other way too. So if, if when you start editing the elements in, in Maplin BC, you will acquire the same locks here, and this this shows the users who are 
are collaborating with the same part of the model or, or the same project, uh, they will know that there is this certain user who has been working with this part of the model. Okay, I'm going to just drag and drop these components into the uh, diagram. Start. So now I have the spacecraft component, and you can see th this is a generalization, this is a decimal uh, term to inherit the information or, or to inherit the properties of my. Uh, so, for, so here, the spacecraft component uh, adds certain value properties. I have imported all those values here for each of the components we imported. So as you can see, this, the same list of values has been imported here and, and the uh, or, or imported by the subcomponents. So if you, if you don't see certain values, it means that uh, I have not created those values yet. So for the values that have been already created, you can see them here, uh, inherited values, because I, I have defined the template in such a way that I want to just uh, redefine or, or inherit it or change the, only these value properties. So that's why you do not see any changes being made to other properties inherited. So as, as you can see here too, like we, we can choose the values that has to be uh, changed uh, that has to be just inherited, but if you don't make any changes to it, they are not yet redefined. So you still have the option here to redefine, but again, it depends on the edit that we made within Maple MVC or, or how the system engineer uh, created the MSC file. So he, he could also now control the properties that has to be redefined by the user, or if he doesn't want certain properties to be changed, uh, I can hide those properties. But on, on the back end, all these properties will still be inherited by the component. So, to, to, to show you uh, or to get more details, uh, you can see same way. I, I'm, I have imported this uh, side panels with uh, the stereotype blocks and component. We, we have different values. I have the quantity, and this quantity, if, if I open the specification, you can see that this. As is actually redefining the property of quantity from the space platform. So here you can see that uh, it's actually redefining the quantity from the spacecraft component, and we we have redefined the value to be having a default value of three. So all these was done within Maple MVC. Uh, the user doesn't need to know uh, the, the end user or, or the subject matter experts who are not familiar with the systemal modeling language can now see uh, or use Maple MVC to easily edit these value properties. And they can redefine without understanding what redefinition is, what the unit is, what are the value property means, what are the different relations that you can create to inherit these ones. So all these complexity or all these decision has been managed by the system engineer and a very simple Excel interface is given to the end user for them to easily work with tables, uh, make changes, uh, have a very familiar Excel interface, and still having the collaboration between this centralized SML model, uh, they also get notified take, with the, all the recent update. So that, that's what Maple MVC uh, offers. So now let, let's see how you can uh, implement Maple MVC in your organization. We do have a, a free evaluation now. You get two months of license online training and application support to uh, get you ramped up with your process. For more information on this, please uh, email us at info at maplesoft.com. And to get more information on what Maple MVC is to access our previous webinars, go to uh, www.maplemvc.com.